So we have to uh, clean out our freezer from all of our parts and pieces. Um, and then I just opened another freezer and found a bunch more parts and pieces that I didn't fall out. So I guess another time, another day. I don't know why I ordered so much. I think I was stocking up for winter. And now we have to move it all. Okay, so this is the beast, the carnivore. This is a one horsepower carnivore. It weighs 68 pounds. It's from, uh, what's that store? Over in Delaware? Oh, uh, the hunting store? Hunting, the big. Yeah. Yeah. Can't remember. Um, it'll come to us about midnight tonight. Uh, but the carnivore is awesome. It works really well. Uh, I'm glad we got this size. We could have used one probably half the size for what we're grinding today because we don't have bone in what we're doing. Um, we're just doing organs and pieces and parts. Okay. Is deer meat okay? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, you may or may not have that in here. Okay, so all of my stuff, a lot of this is already ground, but the whole purpose of grinding it today is we're mixing it together. So this is ground chicken feet. I don't know if you want to get a close-up on what ground chicken feet look like. Uh, we're using that partly for the calcium. Cabela's. Cabela's, thank you. Uh, this is ground chicken organs and includes heart, liver, and gizzard. This, uh, all these came from hair today. Um, so this is two pounds of chicken gizzards. So the gizzards we're using as muscle meat. Uh, the heart really counts as muscle meat. We've got uh, straight heart as well. Chicken hearts, speak of the devil. And everybody into the pool. We've got beef pancreas, I gotta find that. Here it is. Ground beef pancreas, which is gonna give us a natural net natural source of the digestive enzymes. And so you'll notice some of this stuff is chunked and some of it's uh, already ground. Um, what else is in my bag of tricks? Oh, somewhere. And we've got ground rabbit organs. We'll mix in at some point too. Oh, we've got some beef liver. Calves liver. Don't do this if you're squeamish, because it's messy and slimy. Probably should put an apron on, but what the heck. Why would we start now? Yeah, why start now? Okay, we're going about to make noise. Because he makes a little noise. big dogs you don't have to grind stuff us folks with little dogs with no teeth we grind stuff and Shayna appreciates it <laughs> not that we have no teeth we're minus a few going to mix, because um, we haven't been to the store, we don't like to go to the store, which is why we have so much stuff in our freezer. Um, I'm going to mix actually Dr. Harvey's Paradigm with half of the batch. Uh, the re reason I'm only going to mix it with half the batch is that Shayna has decided she doesn't like green things in her food. 
and she won't eat it if I put green things in there. Well, she only represents 25% of our... 25% of the dogs. But this is very good for her. But we do have cranberries that are going to go in too. Why would you add cranberries? Pee pee problems. We got pee pee problems in this house. I'm trying to find my fish. Is emu a warming protein, do you know? Uh, it's actually not that warm because it's a big bird. It can run kind of fast, though. Right. We also have whole sardines, which also came from here today. Oh, fishy. What would the properties of the sardines be? What would that do for us? Sardine is cold. It's a nice cooling, and we're using it for its omega-3, plus it's the whole fish, so we're getting some calcium in that as well. Slurpy, slurpy. I love it when the cranberries go through because they make a poppy noise. <laughs> No, we're not doing pup loaf this time, but we are going to refreeze. Yeah, we are going to refreeze. What's going on here? That was Gabby. Is she going up? Perhaps. She decided we weren't going to feed her. She was leaving. Or she didn't like the noise. Mm -hmm. Did you get the other stuff out of the fridge? Chicken organs, which is the heart, gizzard, heart, sorry, heart, gizzard, and liver, chicken. So, Teresa Carpenter's metal personality is freaking out. <laughs> You're not measuring. Nope. Sorry, Teresa. Not even close. I'm just making a big old batch of mixed up meat. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly mixed, because they're going to eat this. It's going to be enough for a couple months. A month and a half, anyway, I think. Um, so, you know, over time, it's all going to even out. Oh, 
you know, I had semi-equal proportions of um, gizzard and heart and all the other things. Um, this one will not have rice. Why will it not have rice? We don't feed our dogs grains. We don't use any starches for our dogs at all. So, and if I were to add rice to this, it would have to be cooked rice. Otherwise, they wouldn't digest it. Cooked and brown, or? Uh, you don't have to grind it. Brown rice. Oh, brown? Uh, you know, it kind of depends what properties you're looking for. Uh, white rice is a better chi tonic. Brown rice is a better blood tonic. Uh, brown rice is higher in fiber. Some dogs need more fiber, some need less. So it just depends what you're trying to do. But again, we just don't feed grains. Oh, that chunk may not go through. Now, when we add the uh, paradigm to that, does that take care of balancing? It's going to help. I'm not going to add um, enough for it to, uh, you know, match the proportions that are recommended on the bag. But this diet is actually not far off because we're adding the chicken feet for our calcium. We've got lots of vitamin D in our liver. Um, the paradigm is going to help us with some of our B vitamins. Uh, but frankly, we could feed this without the paradigm and just call it prey model. And then we add oils at the time of feeding, but remember there is some sardine in here, so that's going to help with the omegas as well. If we didn't want to use the paradigm, then we could also grind up fresh vegetables yes. in this. So if it was summer and our garden was working, I would have uh, butternut squash and some sort of dark leafy greens. Um, absolutely. <laughs> what More beef pancreas, yum. Natural digestive enzymes. Go with another beef liver. Would that, liver. would that help with dogs with digestive issues? Would what help? The pancreas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. We, I actually have a bunch of pancreas because we bought it, or I bought it, when um, Scout was with us because he was pretty prone to pancreatitis. Uh, he actually was my impetus for designing my pancreatitis diets. He helped with that. Because, you know, our dogs have to teach us something always. See what we got still down here. Oh, you're, you're really frozen still. Would tripe be good in this? Tripe would be excellent. She's very smelly. And I didn't have any tripe in the freezer. The beef pancreas is a little smelly. That's what This 
uh, carnivore grinder will do bone, it'll do rabbit, whole rabbits, it'll do chicken bones with no problem. So putting frozen blocks down is not an issue. If it's not, it should be. It is. Oh, I guess it went with this fish. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a story about the headless fisherman? <laughs> the headless fisherman? I don't think so. Maybe it was horseman. <laughs> I don't. Best investment we've made, though. Yeah, if you want to grind stuff, it's a, it's very worthwhile. We have a little tiny one um, that's, that a friend gave us um, that does an okay job, too. We use it for real small projects. What, uh, what fish was that again? They're whole sardines. Whole sardines. Sardines are those little tiny things in the can. Yeah, they're kind of bigger. I'm trying to keep this so that Shana has a good mix when we get to hers. So one more chicken feet for here. And then we're gonna shut this off. But we could also scoop Shana out some first and no, because I don't have them for all that in here. So we're just going to mix our paradigm and we'll show them how we put it in containers. And then I'll... this to paradigm at the time of feeding and we like I said we don't need the paradigm I just like our guys to have some greens so and I like to play with food and I can do it different every time I do it just because it's fun we don't seem to get complaints from the peanut gallery the peanut gallery is looking like this looks like fun thing about the paradigm, this is really juicy, the paradigm will suck up a lot of that juice. Alright, so let's see what we can do with that. Is messy. Wait. Messes, messes, messes. Uh, Shane is cleaning up the stuff where I splashed. Let's take the paper out so I don't put it in. 
Would, would you grind the paper or would you well, put it in whole? Uh, I think grinding for the cellulose, which, you know, <laughs> hey, read the pet food labels, there's cellulose in there. That's a nice powdery poop, huh? And what measurement are you using <laughs> on this? I knew it'd freeze away. <laughs> Are you going to add any oil with this? Uh, we add oil at the time of feeding. My can is a little too small. Hey, who wants to clean the floor? You're going to get dripped on, but clean the floor, kids. So I just want to make sure that the paradigm is getting mixed in enough that it's going to suck up this moisture. So for those of you who have been with us for a long time, you might remember my very first pup loaf recipe uh, we used um, Honest Kitchen. I didn't know about, that. well this Dr. Harvey's didn't exist, the paradigm at that point. Um, so this would be kind of a similar premise. If you really wanted to cook this, you could. If you didn't want to feed raw, our guys will do just fine with it being raw. So this is, this is just me having fun with food. Nobody has to do this. I just... I think it's fun to take pieces and parts and put them together. Someone said they use a shovel to mix theirs. Well, I'm kind of thinking I should have had a bigger pan or I should have ground a couple pounds less. Um, shovel's a good idea. But we're really doing this because in our interim house, I don't know where the grinder is going to be if it is at all. It may be in a storage box, hard to get to. So this way everything will be mixed up and ready to roll for the kids. Because we don't have a KitchenAid mixer anymore because I broke it. Well, we have my grandma's, but it's from like 1940, so I don't think we want to torture it with grinding dog food. And we have our containers ready, which we use Chinese takeout soup containers for freezing. It works really well. And miraculously, they hold one pound each. So it makes it really easy to know portions when we're dipping out for doggies. Again, it's just, here, Georgie. Ah, somebody says you're cooking the Italian way. <laughs> Is this the Italian way where you just throw <laughs> stuff in the pot and drip it all over the floor and have fun with your food? It's getting a better consistency now. It is sucking up that moisture. So it's serving its purpose. George, come on, cleaning crew. Jeez Louise. Slacking on the job. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oop, there's some junk over. All righty. All right, so these are our little one pound containers. It's 
Stewie saw that fall. <laughs> He's like, I'm coming. They're still missing. Oh. George, you're slacking over here. Remember, he can't see as well. Yeah, but his snooper should work. <laughs> We have nice big markers. Oh, we do have lots of markers for packing. <laughs> there are going to be some that are marked W slash O. Without? <laughs> I was going to just put a P for paradigm, but you do whatever you want. <laughs> we can put you in charge of labeling. Since I've been in charge of labeling... Packing boxes. Don't know why. Hugh's in charge of taping because I'm really bad with tape. Just for the metal personalities, we have previously weighed these containers, so we do know that it's about a pound. There you go, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> we were curious. Well, the first couple times we did dog food, we... We actually had our scale down here and we weighed. And the first few times I did dog food, I made sure I had every ingredient just perfect and right. That was about 15 years ago. Now we're just all about emptying the freezer and refilling it. And getting it to North Carolina Frozen. Somebody said dry ice. Anybody know where you buy dry ice? I feel there's somebody on there must know. I can ask Dennis, I guess. He ships on dry ice all the time. Georgie, get your butt over here and clean the floor. He's like, oh, I missed some. He's dragging his ears in it. Clean it out of his ears later. Spaniel ears are kind of like men with a beard. You always have a snack. As a matter of fact, Gabby, the Gabby had uh, uh, cocoa therapy macaroons in her ears earlier. These are throwaway containers. Yeah. But they are recyclable they are containers. Cardboard. We used to use plastic, and it did okay, but, you know, then you worry about the plastic effect on the food. And no, Jane Lister, uh, the movers will not take full freezers. They will not, they will not do perishable anything perishable. Or um, liquids. Well, uh, flammables. Uh, yeah, like cleaning liquids and stuff like that they don't want to do. But with our motorhome, we have a, a nice freezer under the refrigerator, and we also have a separate freezer underneath the uh, in storage. So we just haven't figured out how to use it. We'll we'll transport in bow. Thank God for bow. What is the difference between beef liver and dried beef liver? Water. Does it matter which you feed? Okay. No, because you, I mean, if you can't find um, organ meats, uh, you could use like a glandular powder um, to get some of the benefits. I don't think that the the dried powders are, um, you know, it's kind of. Dried food versus fresh food, I think you lose a little bit of something in the translation, but um, particularly now with shortages and everything, yeah, you use what you can get. So, the um, most of the raw foods that we buy commercially are for dogs are only about. 20% vegetable matter. Um, so we're not actually all that far off. 
Our containers came from Amazon. The one thing that you have to remember is that the lids are sold separately. You have to order containers and you have to order lids. And, and Paradigm can actually be purchased from several uh, locations, but we do have it on our website. Yeah, you could use the Raw Vibrance or the Paradigm. What's the difference between the two? Uh, the Raw Vibrance, all the vitamin and mineral content in that comes from the fresh food. Uh, whereas the Paradigm has a vitamin mineral mix added to it. Um, the reason I you tend to use the Paradigm more is I think it smells really good. The ingredients are a little bit different. This one just smells good to me. So that's a personal. I haven't asked the dogs which they like better, but this one smells, I think it's got some cinnamon and ginger in it or something that just really smells good to me. So it just makes me feel better. Remember, I'm that person who has like this sixth sense with food. Uh, it's kind of like knowing what the properties of the food are and knowing what things mix well together. Like every time we have pork, I really want applesauce and collards. I just feel like that's what goes with pork. And like even when I make a pork stew, I like to throw apples in the crock pot. There are just certain things that, that mesh. Food with benefits. Is that why when they roast a whole pig, they put an apple in its mouth? <laughs> Maybe, see, pork and apples. <laughs> Somebody way back when, you know, whatever century they started roasting pigs that way, uh, these go together. Shana is saying, hello, you're not feeding the dog. I know, we're playing with food and not feeding you. Where did the sardines come from? Here today. Okay. This is a good advertisement for hair today, right here, let me tell you. Because <laughs> all the weirdness came from there. All the goodness. <laughs> well, yes, but, you know, everybody keeps saying, I can't find gizzards, I can't find hearts. Well, now you know where I shop. We placed an order last month for all this, and there's still a bunch more in the freezer, and we've already fed a bunch. It's been about nine hundred dollars Because, again, I was storing up for the winter. Plus, um, when you're ordering frozen stuff to be shipped and you're paying for shipping, you might as well pack as much into that order as you can as much as storage space um, to get the most bang for your buck on shipping. What, Miss Shana B? She says, Mommy, if you could just drop a little bit of that over here, that'd be so forever great. And forever much more happier. has a collection of uh, bisque figurines that were like ceramic, so they were much heavier, that were her mother's. And they just filled six large moving boxes with them. Personally, I'm to the point in my life where I'm like, yeah, collecting a bunch of stuff? No. Then you have to move all that stuff. Okie dokie. If you cooked this, uh, how much would you cook it? 26 pounds for that batch. Um, depends how you cooked it. I mean, you could dump all this in a slow cooker if you wanted to. You could um, put it in a pan and bake it like a puff loaf if you wanted to. Lightly bake it, perhaps. Lightly bake it. So I, I like to use low heat, so I do like a 325. Um, for, well, it depends on the size of your pan. Um, you know, if you're doing something like pumpkins, then 
they don't cook more than 20, 25 minutes, the most probably. Um, so that would be like the little cupcake ones, but it, depending on the size, we have loaf pans that go anywhere from this up to this, um, and then we have lasagna pans. So a lasagna pan of this uh, at 325, you could leave it in your oven for an hour um, and it's gonna be nice and juicy. And cooking will take some of the nutrients out. No, actually, it won't. Uh, okay. That's kind of a myth. The big thing with cooking is that you want to use all the juices. So if you slow cook something, you got to use all that juice. Because everybody says, oh, the vitamins leach out, blah, blah, blah. Well, they're still in there. They'll disappear. They're in the juice. The fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K are... Uh, a little bit sensitive to heat so their power will go down a little with the heat and the cooking um, so that's why a lot of times with uh, dogs that eat homemade food the um, I have to give her a finger pull to shut her up uh, the vitamin D levels will sometimes be low here you go madam you taste tested she says oh even with greens mm. would you put a few lids on so they can see the lids oh, sure. And we have not had problems with these cardboard containers creating freezer burn. They don't get freezer burn. They don't pop open. Never had a problem with them. We've kept them in the freezer for up to three months, I guess, in the past. So I forget what I just said, 26 pounds of food. And mm -hmm. I don't know how long we spent on that, but half an hour, start to finish. The video will tell us. Um, <laughs> cleaning up, uh, well, I still got to do the second grind, but cleaning up the carnivore takes longer than making the food sometimes. Because <laughs> it has lots of nooks and crannies where little bits of meat like to hang out. You gotta take the whole thing apart. But totally worth it. Do you enjoy this? I love this. This would be, you know, I, I kind of would love to have a homemade pet food company, but I don't want to play games with the FDA. Because for me, it would be fun. Like if I could have a little pet store, like a little barkery, where people could come in and pick up their little containers of fresh made food and uh, fresh made treats and stuff, I think that would be awesome. But I don't want to play with health, de health department officials. How long uh, would this feed our our crew? Well, we have four. What did I just say? One, two, three, 26. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Uh, they eat about a pound and a half a day, and we've got 26 pounds here. So 26 and 13, 39, 39 days. Um, so I think I said at the beginning it'd get us like a month and a half, so a month and a third. Uh, plus, uh, I've got to do whatever is left in there, and then I found another 20 pounds in the freezer, so... <laughs> So that'll be, I don't know when that's going to get grabbed. I don't know, we might have to pack the grinder where I can find it, or I might have to do another grind before we go. <laughs> Gabby, did you figure out you're missing something? She says, I got up the stairs. I don't think I can get back down. I don't know how. She hasn't figured out stairs yet. Since she didn't have to do them in her old home. What do you think the total cost of this grind probably is off the top of your head um the stuff i bought is not cheap uh a lot of the i mean probably could figure out per price per pound um i mean if i if i went on the website you know, some of the organs and the chicken feet and stuff are two and three dollars a pound but some of the meats and this is pretty much organs i didn't um I didn't use like rabbit is like ten or eleven dollars a pound. So it just depends what meat you're using. And certainly if you wanted to do something like this and use your own meats from the grocery store, then buy what's on sale, grind it up, you know, get your organs from wherever you can. Um, I like hair today because their stuff is locally sourced, grass fed, free range. Um, 
you know, they're pretty picky about where they're getting things. Um, so I know you want more. Uh, so for me, it's it's worth um, splurging a little. It just depends on what your budget is. You can do, you know, certainly you could make homemade dog food pretty reasonably. Um, whoa! Gizzard mania! Okay, you can eat those. I'm leaving! See ya, Bonnie! We got all the pieces in. I don't know what's gonna happen to them, but... Okay! Thank you! I'm coming back, Shana. I gotta get you a small piece, because you can't chew. Oh, Alright. <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. Well, she was down here, and then she made her way upstairs. But now I think she wants to come back because she figured out what we're doing. All right, are we? You can you can say bye bye whenever you want, honey. Whenever well, you're tired of holding that phone. Why don't you say goodbye, and I'll start music. All right, folks.